Hi, I'm Christopher Rosen from Gold Derby, and I'm joined now by Drummond Lace and Ian Holtquist, the composers from Dickinson Season 2, which is now on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, thank you both for doing this. I guess I just, you know, I know you did the music for, for Season 1 as well. Uh, going into Season 2, can you talk a little about what you guys wanted to evolve on or expand upon what you had done maybe in Season 1? Yeah, uh, Season 2, I think, was interesting for us because all the characters are growing up. Uh, you know, the season one kind of very much like felt like a lot of characters are at their end of teenagehood. Is that word? Teenagehood. Yeah. And uh, season two, they're being really thrown into their 20s and they're starting to deal with a lot of like real life issues, uh, marriage, kids, illness. Death. Yeah. Illness. Yeah. And, so, and I mean, it's, it's leading uh, politically into the Civil War, um, which is what then will continue to season three, which I don't think is a mystery just because it's, you know, chronological, loosely right. chronological and biographical show. So so we wanted the music to follow that and feel more mature and kind of grow up with the kids. Yeah, and there's definitely new themes in season two. We have an Austin theme, which we didn't have in season one because he wasn't very prevalent. Uh, we have an evolution of the Emily and Sue theme. Um, the death theme kind of stays the same, but I think- Nobody. But, yeah, there's, there's a new character. Um, so I think that by the end, we've kind of um, gone more from like the comedic stings into more of kind of like fleshed out um, cues, even musically. And we hope to kind of continue that for the next seasons. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. Can you talk a little about like, when do you guys, like, when are you brought in uh, to uh, like, I guess at what point of the process are you brought in? Are you brought in like right at the, at the beginning with the scripts? Like how, how early are you like, you know, getting the material to like start thinking about like how you want the music to sound? to go with like these developing themes, let's say. So I think for season two, we started talks before they shot just because uh, a split the lark. So that was something that they had to have um, when they were shooting. And there have always been, they've always been really good about sending us scripts just to give us kind of a really good idea of what's gonna be happening. And I think that apart from split the lark, we didn't really start until we started seeing rough um, cuts of yeah. the first few episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, it changes, you know, like season to season. Um, I think for season one, it was the same thing. We actually came in when they had most most of the season shot already. Mm -hmm. um, and so season two, we got involved a little bit earlier. And I feel like for season three, got involved even a little bit earlier. So, um, but it's it's nice to be kind of in touch with Devo Yates, um, who's a supervisor, and with Elena Smith early on, just because that way we're all on the same page. And yeah. once they're shooting, things get really hectic for them i think yeah it, it's cool being brought in early because like even though if we're not writing music we know the story and we can talk about it and we're thinking about it a lot and then and if, if there is any on-camera moments like there was for season two uh we start coordinating that pretty early on because we want to make sure everything's done right yeah you mentioned split the lark that scene is is great and actually when i was w watching it i was just like wow i never heard this song before what is this it's so good and then i was like oh it's an original, <laughs> original song that you guys i came up for this can you talk a little about that and i guess you're like like the way you make, like, I guess just like your inspirations for that and like kind of talk a little about that process because it's so, it's great. And it's a great moment in this year and this season, I think is really as well. And musically, I just loved it. So yeah, can you talk a little about like developing Thanks. that and like doing it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was cool when they asked us to be involved with it because in the script, I think it just said, you know, uh, whoever is on stage, I think it was Sue was on stage. Uh, I think one point might have been Emily on stage, but whoever was starts singing the split the like poem but sent to like a beautiful song and that was all the direction we had at first and then they said we want you guys to write it like set mm -hmm. your music to emily's lyrics or emily's poem and uh yeah it was really cool and it took us a minute to kind of find the right direction to take it in because it, you had to blend coming out of the opera la traviata mm -hmm. and it had to feel epic and huge but also hit the right emotional moment for emily's character but then it also has to fit in with the music supervision. So then we knew that the Maggie Rogers track was coming up afterwards. So it's like, okay, how do we stay within a similar palette? Cause then, you know, you can't go like super electronic, but then we um, at first went super acoustic mm -hmm. and that wasn't strong enough. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest inspiration was um, the Adele Bond song, it's just terrible. doing something like really beautiful and like kind of heart wrenching. Um, and, um, and I mean, Ella Hunt sang it so beautifully. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, it just, we, the, the, the lyrical content was interesting because I don't think obviously 
Emily Dickinson wrote this thinking that somebody would be like singing it. And you realize how um, poetry can lend itself to that, but it's also like you want to respect the cadences of a poem, but then it's hard to kind of like make that into a song, but we're, yeah. we're really happy with how it turned out and the fans seem to love it. So that's, that's a good response. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. You mentioned like her poem. I mean, like, obviously that is a, a song based on her, her poem. How much of like your process is like actually looking at her poetry and like her words. Do, do you, does that factor into like maybe inspiration for you guys at all when you're writing music? I, I think yeah. it varies. Uh, some of the moments where they have the poem being recited is very literal. And I think there's moments like Split the Lark, for example, like where you really, really need to like get to the core of it and like work with what's there. And then sometimes, uh, you know, it's not necessarily as tied to it. And it's just kind of the, the poem is there, but we're not necessarily writing exactly to that. But I do think that um, there have been times when the poem has informed, has given a really good idea about like the mood of the episode, even without necessarily like if, if the episode tonal, you know, like musically didn't have a very strong center, I feel like the poem really kind of like nails it down. Um, I feel like an example I can think of is just the, the first uh, season with um, the one that starts with the um, on the boat. Oh, episode three. Episode three. Yeah. And, you know, there's just there's just so, so much. So it's so evocative. And I think that um, we don't have the time, unfortunately, to go and like read the rest of her poetry. But like every episode has a different poem. So at this point, we're 20 poems. 20 poems in for like very deep. So yeah, um, and we'll have 10 more next season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's good. I guess, can you, um, you I think, I think Sophie, you mentioned this before, we we're talking about Split the Lark, but how like you're kind of like you're cognizant of the music, uh, the, 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 uh, the needle drops and stuff that are in the, in the show. And I guess one of the things I love about your your score is that it is so, it, it sounds just, I mean, like for lack of a better word, it sounds like pop music often to me or like just like not traditional scores for like TV shows and, and movies, which I really love. Like I was listening to the album all weekend, like preparing for this. And I was just like, this is this is great. I like really enjoyed it. I guess, can you talk about like writing like music like that for, you know, like for visual images? Cause I just think it's not, it's not as common, let's say. And I just found that really interesting listening to it. So guys, can you guys talk about a little about like making music that is both works for the show and then also is just like good, like pop music for lack of a better word again. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think part of the initial idea when we got brought on was that they wanted uh, a score that could kind of live in both worlds. And I think that's why they were interested in having us work on it because we both have production and band backgrounds, uh, but we also studied film scoring and like have degrees in it. and do it for a living. So I think they really wanted the people who could walk that line of like, they know how film score should work, but they also know how to work with bands and write pop music. Um, I'm glad you like it. I mean, we, we hope people like it. We, we're not necessarily writing to like make something like really, really good. We're, we're just trying to support the story in front of us. Um, well, we're, tr- we're, tr- we're trying to do it. I, I mean, we don't want to sound bad, obviously, yeah. but like it's, it's nice. That but I think that that's the, biggest, reading like that. that's the biggest challenge though, is like, how scory do you get but then still maintain that aspect of like you know shazam ability kind of thing of like if this is a track um and i think that then having the ones that are very much sounding like a track that becomes a challenge because you know um a song like a needle drop that artist might have been in the studio six weeks working on it you know and tweaking it and you know having like some crazy mastering engineer mixing engineer and this is us you know having like a few couple of weeks per episode having to make these songs that sound on par with Billie Eilish and Maggie Rogers and stuff. So I think that that's the biggest challenge, just like having the production sound good. Um, and, you know, the the post, you know, every the team is really, really good. So I think that even if we don't always deliver something that's like excellent, they make it sound excellent. But um, I'm mm-hmm. glad that you like the score. It's, awesome. no, it's great. How do you, can you talk a little about how you guys work together? Like, I guess writing it, obviously, you know, like you're together right now. I mean, like how does, how does, how does that working relationship work? I guess. I mean, it literally, how we write is how we're sitting right now. <laughs> yeah, This is pretty much what the computer sees whenever so, we're working together. Yeah. So one person will maybe start a cue or start um, a scene. And then the other person will be like, well, do you want to take over for a second? So we kind of go back and forth um, and kind of fill things in. And I don't think there's ever been a cue. 
there's maybe been a, a few cues that only one of us has written mm. um, in kind of like the interest of time, but it's very much very collaborative. And at the, you know, the same way that it's like, this works great. There's also times when it's like somebody will start something and I'll be like, nah, I don't know. I'll start over and he'll, you know, do the same thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's always, I, there's a lot of other composer duos working now. Um, and I think it seems like a lot of them will fully just split up. They're like, Hey, you take this theme. I'll take this theme. And we've just never really come at it that way. We've always kind of come at it as four hands on the keyboard, so to speak. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's worked for us. It, it's interesting. It's, it's very hands-on. Um, I don't think it would work with everyone. It helps that we're married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's the absolutely no judgment, you know, with making mistakes and stuff. So I think that that mm -hmm. cuts out a lot of um, a lot of kind of extra time and makes it very yeah. efficient. So I want to talk to you again a little more about season two, and then I have a question about season three. But back to season two for a second, like one of the other big things, I think a big theme of the season certainly is like fame and like processing and fame for, em for Emily. And I guess, I mean, how much like did that like... Did, how did, much did you think about that when you were also doing the music? Like how to like contextualize the feelings of fame and, and like that she's having with the, with the score, I guess, if, if at all. I, I was just wondering on that front. I, for me personally, it was more thinking about how she felt about fame and how they portrayed that with then knowing essentially the outcome of her life. You know, kind of like relating how this moment in time that is being captured um, fits within the greater life of Emily Dickinson and I think for me personally it brought kind of like a vulnerability and it brought this excitement but then ultimately I don't know I, I think I think it made me realize more about her but then also just I don't know the just 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 the fact that she was an artist enough to not need the fame to be able to be creative which you know is a very fulfilling Thing to think about for any of us mm -hmm. I don't know Do yeah I feel like you thought about it yeah I mean I think it, it led into a lot of the themes with like Sam Bowles and a lot of those scenes where like Emily becomes infatuated with Sam and Sam is kind of like the the bringer of fame or supposed bringer of fame uh I mean by the end we're pretty much like Sam is the devil <laughs> he basically just turns into that by the end but like it yeah I think we definitely had that with the music where you know I think even episode two, maybe at like the cake eating contest, the, there's a couple of score cues, like super bright and shiny pop. And then by the time you get to the end of the season and Emily's kind of gone through this journey and realized Sam's true intentions, the music's like very dark and almost evil sounding. So I think we, we kind of tried to ride that journey with her of the allure into learning that she should stay away from it and it's not gonna bring her any happiness. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before too the uh, split the lark sounding a little like uh, Adele, or at least inspired a little bit by that. Are there other and and obviously like we said like Billie Eilish, and Maggie Rogers, and all these different artists. Are there other like when you're doing this? Are there other inspirations you're taking either like oh like other either in scores or other composers or anything that you're like oh that kind of that maybe there's an idea there that we could evolve or anything like that. Uh, when we first first started like on season one, we were kind of looking at Missy Elliott and the prodigy in phoenix in phoenix um as kind of like when we were first trying to figure out the sound but i think moving on from there i don't unless there's like a specific song i don't think there was anything too much we were just kind of we'd already had this collection of material from season one and we were just kind of figuring out how to expand upon that and it would kind of yeah. push us in different directions and we also don't want to date the show it's you know it's really easy to fall into kind of like right now especially in the season one it was like oh, you know, like make it sound really trappy or then, you know, like fall into like EDM tropes and then you don't. So we're also trying to do something that sounds uh, like the show and not necessarily like, yes, we're like taking into consideration the musical landscape, but then also making something that can kind of stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for better, for worse, we, we try to not get too stuck on um, anything else and we're it's more like the palette of the episode and with music supervision trying to keep that like the palette more in mind than yeah else. yeah and then you mentioned this before obviously like season three and not to you don't need to go into great detail on season three or whatever but obviously season three is going to end up like coming into the civil war I guess how does that you know that's uh, <laughs> like how does that affect your 
thought processes on the music going forward? I mean, like, obviously you mentioned like this season kind of ends in a more darker spot. Is the music keep, will the music follow suit then in season three? Is that what you're imagining? Or like, what are your early thoughts, I guess, on that front? Yeah, I mean, I think it will. Uh, I, without saying anything, uh, you know, the story is going to continue in the direction that it was heading. Uh, yeah. So we, we actually, we haven't started fully writing yet, so we can't fully answer, but it's definitely, we're actually thinking about that. And like, we've seen, you've seen one some stuff and episode. we've read the scripts and we are thinking, it's like, how do we, how yeah. do we take this um, forward? You know, like, where, yeah. where do we go from here? So we're actually like right in the moment of figuring that out. Yeah. And I mean, the character arcs, there's, there's a bit of a time jump. Um, so there's character arcs that need to be developed and, you know, like they're getting older and um, yeah, without revealing too much, but yeah, there's, there's definitely, um, there's, it's definitely going to be a fun season for us to score. There's, there's going to be a lot of room. Yeah. A lot of new yeah. territory for us to figure out. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure you're very excited about that as well. Uh, Drum and Lace and Ian Hulkus, the composers of Dickinson season two is on Apple TV right now or Apple TV plus right now. And the score you can listen to on Spotify and Apple music and all variety of other uh, streaming platforms, and I would highly suggest you doing so. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining us here. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for the great questions. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was really fun. And like I said, the music is, it's just great. It's so, it's really good. So I was like, I, I just was excited to talk to you both. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.